What's happening Hardscapers? Today we're going to go over seven commonly overlooked paving mistakes when it comes to a paver project. So let's get into this. Now these are seven aspects of a paver project that may go overlooked. It's very easy for these things to go overlooked and these can cause failures in the future. I have done a lots in lift and relays and I have seen these things happen and I've seen the failures that they do cause. And it can be very common that these things go overlooked in a paver project. So these, if you focus on these, you'll give your project the best shot possible of not failing in the future. This is not an all-encompassing list but these are the most common things that I have seen in my career in owning a business and in doing a lot of lift and relays. We're gonna start from the bottom up and starting with excavation and having a uniform excavation and a uniform depth. So this excavation needs to follow the slope of your final product. We want any water that works its way down to move away from that foundation follow the same slope as your paver product project and it needs to be uniform within three eighths of an inch over a 10 foot area. This is extremely important to your project and excavation is just one of those things that can easily go overlooked in terms of providing that uniform surface and providing a depth that is reasonable for your paver project for vehicular traffic or pedestrian traffic, whatever that might be excavation uniform following the slope and the proper depth for that excavation is number one number two is compaction and this is something that you'll see time and time again causing failures compaction is extremely crucial from compacting that subgrade to compacting your base if you're using a smaller compactor you need to know how much pounds of force that compactor is able to create and for every 1,000 pounds of force that equals one inch of lift that that you can typically do with your compaction. So starting with the compaction of the subsoil, that's a first thing and it's commonly overlooked as it is. And if it's a clay subsoil, you should be using like a sheep's foot roller or some sort of ramming compactor or a very large reversible plate compactor to compact that as well as working through your base following the ability of your compactor that you have on hand. You shouldn't be using one of those small rental ones you should be getting a larger one if possible knowing the pounds per force and 1000 pounds equals one inch of lift in your base material working your way up adding water if necessary if using a dense graded aggregate and geogrid if needed and we have more videos about each of these topics on our channel so if you go to our youtube channel and you just use the search bar there you can use any of these key phrases to find more videos along the same lines Additionally, we have the members only platform that covers all of this in depth and you can find a link for that in the description below. So moving on to fabric, kind of moving our way back a little bit, a fabric will really help in separating that subsoil from your base, preventing any contamination under load in the future, as well as potentially filtration, drainage, and even reinforcement if using a woven landscaping fabric or a combination of non-woven and biaxial geogrid with that. And fabric is number three, which means aggregate is number four. The commonly used aggregate that leads to failures is stone dust. We have a video exclusively on this aggregate and why you should not be using it. It is a commonly used aggregate that I have seen under many failures. Whether it's the bedding material or a complete depth of this, it does not let water drain freely through it as well as other bedding materials or even worse, somebody uses it as the entire base and that is a recipe for failure. I've had to do many projects where I'm digging out all of the stone dust up to eight inches in depth. It is a pain. It causes many, many failures in and of itself, especially in climates that experience freeze thaw cycles. Having moisture building up below the surface of your pavers will also cause things like efflorescence, polymeric sand failure, and just so many bad things to happen. So do not use stone dust, whatever you do. And number five is the screen 
bead layer depth or the bedding layer depth. Once again, this should be fairly uniform when it comes to getting to your bedding layer. And we don't use anything more than one and a half inches for our bedding layer. I have seen projects where they are using upwards of four inches of bedding layer in some areas because they just do not have a uniform base preparation to the surface to get prepared for their bedding layer and this shows because this causes ruts or dips in that pavement area that sand or that bedding layer is there to be able to provide a level surface for you to start laying pavers of course following a slope but a uniform surface for you to be able to start laying your pavers so the screed layer depths no more than an inch and a half i aim for an inch because my screed pipes are one inches on the outside diameter we use a three quarter inch inside diameter black gas pipes for our screeding and number six is the edge restraint so once we have paved the surface with our pavers we are moving on to edge restraint and the common failure that i see with this is that the edge restraint is too high on the paver because the installer has not scraped away that bedding layer before going ahead and installing that edge restraint. That edge restraint should restrain both the pavers as well as the bedding layer. So if that edge restraint is too high, not only is it gonna be unsightly because it's gonna be showing, but also it's just not installed properly and that bedding material will slip out from underneath it because it's not being retained by anything. It's a smaller aggregate, it will slip out, causing those pavers to dip on the sides of the pavement project. So before installing, whatever it might be a concrete edge restraint a plastic edge that screed layer needs to be scraped away and then the edge restraint is installed and finally number seven polymeric sand not being consolidated this is a common one that we still see with projects with polymeric sand failure and it's very easy to spot as especially after lifting a couple of pavers. You see the polymeric sand had hardened on the surface, but there's just air gaps underneath that. Polymeric sand had not made its way down to the bottom of the joint, and that's because the polymeric sand needs to be consolidated. Once the edge restraint is installed, we can then install polymeric sand or any other jointing compound, and that gets spread out, swept into the joints, and then we run a plate compactor on the surface with some sort of mat protecting the pavers from that plate compactor. But what this plate compactor does is it vibrates that sand down to the bottom of the joint. It really does consolidate about a half and an inch in some cases to an inch so that's a lot of material that gets consolidated down to the bottom of the joint and it's an incredibly important step in the polymeric sand joint and compound installation process to ensure that there's no failure and this should be repeated all the way till you get to the top of that pavement surface but actually an eighth of an inch below the top is where your polymeric sand should sit or an eighth of an inch below the bottom of the chamfer on the paver whichever is lower. And those are seven quick common paving mistakes when it comes to installing paver projects that will help you prevent failures in the future. Once again, you can go to our channel and in the search bar, you can just type in any of these keywords that stuck out to you to find more videos on this. Or if you want a more in-depth look, go to our membership platform. We have many videos there and courses there. Installation of pavers, retaining walls, lighting, and gas fire features. And we get really in-depth with each of these subjects. Please, if you found this video at all helpful, a like really goes a long way. Leave any questions in the comment section below. I'll get back to anybody and everybody that does leave a comment below. And subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content. Thank you so much for watching.